The KTM and Husqvarna 125 two-strokes are all new for 2023, but just how powerful are these new 125s? And can we make them faster? Let's find out. So for 2023, the KTM group have um, maybe revealed, unveiled the future of two-strokes with these fuel-injected 125 and 250 two-strokes with electric starts as well. So we've just got hold of one here. We're gonna get the Husqvarna on the dyno, see what numbers this little 125 pumps out. For reference, last year's model, 2022, pumps out about 35 and a half on this dyno. So uh, let's see if we can beat those numbers today with this. It's completely stock, 2023 Husqvarna 125. Stay tuned to see how much faster we can make the new bike and to find out how much that might cost you. But first, let's see how the standard bike performs. Roland, so you just completed your first ever run on the dyno on the new 23 Husky 125. Yep. Tell us the result. Well, it's showing 32 and a half horsepower on this dyno. I often make excuses and talk about this room and, uh, and comparing day on day. Um, statistically, the dyno room today is better today than it was when I last tested a, a new gas gas in the last couple of years, last 18 months in here. Any bike in here today would be better than it was on the day um, when I tested the gas gas. So that's the baseline behind it. It is showing more bottom end um, than the gas gas, but it has at the moment lost a little bit of top and rev compared with the previous bike. So the carbureted bike has got a little bit more high RPM power. This one's got a little bit more torque. I understand from the rider it corners better and so forth, but um, out as a dyno back to back at the moment, this is a little bit lacking on um, peak horsepower, which I would suggest is probably down to fueling rather than anything else, which we're not able to change at the moment. The system is not available for remapping the ECU to change the air fuel ratio. So at the moment, I suspect it is nothing more than that that will but at the moment it is a couple of horsepower two and a half horsepower down on the um 2022 carbureted bike so next up you're going to chuck a pipe on it is that what yeah, we're going to do now yeah, see so what hcs does to it yeah we'll pop a pipe on it and um and then i'm gonna over the next week or so have the cylinder off have a little bit of a look in there i've got a special vhm 12 degree piston which is a, a new piston they've just bought out it is different from the 12 degree ones ones that run before and a different cylinder head the settings in the cylinder head that uh, they've also looked at and working with are really radically different much more japanese in the way that it's orientated and and the thought process but um we will see where we end up but for now we're going to pop a pipe on and see what we get from that today one more question then so at the start of the video, I called it the future of two strokes, but currently we're down on power. So is it the future of two strokes? What do you think? I think it is the future of two strokes. It's not like everything, you know, there, there needs to be a bit of a feel through with it. I think Skoda isn't what Skoda was, is one of my favorite sayings. And I think we're in that situation here. I think electric start, I think fuel injection, We'll see with it with the two-stroke thing, you know, there's quite a range that you need to go through from being the top of a mountain to being down at sea level, from riding in the sand to, to all sorts of different conditions will mean that there will be more regular fuel mapping and whether or not KTM are going to give you the facility to, to take the bike into a territory which might suit one day but another day could be quite dangerous and detrimental to the machine, we will have to see. But uh, in principle, yeah, it can be. Um, we'll, we'll have to see on that one. I don't, I'm, I'm quite excited by it. I'm not sort of like, what the hell do I think they're doing? This is a silly thing to do. I, I can see potential in it, but uh, it's not without certain reservations. So he left Roland alone to fit the new exhaust system and then begin his testing and development process. Roland is a two-stroke expert, so this type of work is right in his wheelhouse. Okay, so a week has passed and we're back in Roland's workshop. He's been working his magic on the 2023 TC125 here. So uh, let's get it back on the dyno and let's see those numbers. Once we reveal our gains, Roland is gonna tell us how he did it and give us four tips on how to turn your 2023 125 into a true rocket ship.
Okay, so there we have it. We've got the um, modified uh, TC125 done on the dyno. And we've gone from, was it 32 and a half last week? Yeah. To just about 36 here today. So, yeah. Roland, tell us how you've managed to achieve those results. First thing we did was we worked out that the button on the handlebar when it's in green makes actually the bike to run slightly richer which gives it a little bit more bottom end but loses just under a horsepower on top so that was a bit of a revelation because I was struggling with the air fuel to think crumbs they've really made this thing rich but uh, okay so we sorted that out turn which, that off yeah so we turn that off which takes away a little bit of the bottom end gives it back a little bit more on top it's still not quite where it should be at that point but and the air fuel so the sniffer up the exhaust does show that it is still even though you can feel it it does confirm the numbers that it is still definitely in this environment which even when i've made the room really cold it's still running extremely on very much on the rich side as a standard setting in the power mode and so forth so that's the first thing we had to do was to uh to make a phone call and say green or white because we've got no handbook for this so we're kind of winging it as we go along and then it was test our hgs exhaust pipe um, which gave us a little bit more rev, so we got more over rev with that. We widened the power band with that, which is... So, so that's full system as well? Yes, that's a full HGS exhaust system. Other exhaust systems are available. Probably not as good, but are available. Um, not from here, though. <laughs> not from here. No, you won't find one in this building. But anyway, so we widened the power band, which in truth is what 99% of riders that have spoken to me say, oh, it falls a bit short. So I can understand why HGS has done that. They've increased the over rev on the bike. So just question, that exhaust pipe that you put on there, HGS have designed this year for this bike. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a new system for a new bike with a new everything. So it's all brand spanking newly developed for this year. The other thing that we've then gone is we've we've looked to VHM, a um, 12 degree piston and a VHM head to suit. So we've managed to uh, increase the mid range and top a little bit with that. And then um, some modifications to the exhaust port. The exhaust port is quite different this year to what they ran in 2022. I've done some mods on that. That in truth did bring the biggest gain. So that's where the big gain has come from of the, the three horsepower. So this is your own modification? Yeah, so I haven't gone here. mad. So what yeah. I've really tried to achieve, because, um, you know, Matt's not an eight-stone rider anymore. He's more of a... Matt Ridgeway, who... Owns this, so he rides for Midwest. So Matt likes a bit of bottom end. So what I've done is I've increased the top end and, and sort of felt my way a little bit and ended up with quite happily with the bike. Let's end up with three horsepower, just over three horsepower, more than stock. Okay, stock green mode, you know, stock light mode. So there's probably a, you know, in truth, two and a half horsepower gain between the two with the, basically with the cylinder work. So really, really happy with that. Bearing in mind that's been achieved without losing any bottom end power. Yeah. I think we would get more top end power from the cylinder yet. There's a little bit more work. I don't think it's, I still prefer the, two, the exhaust port on the 2022 bike to the exhaust port on the 23 bike. In my view, a little bit of a backward step, but you know, they still make the gas gas, which is the same mm -hmm. as the 22 bike. So there is more peak to be had. I was concerned that if I went any further, I'd start to lose bottom end feel as much as actual figures. You know, you, you, you don't want to feel that the bike stumbles. You want, when you change gear, you want it to pull hard again. This bike will do that. Could it have a little bit more peak? Could it have a bit more overhead? Yes, it could. But this is something I would sell to, as a kit, um, I would sell, I would offer to a multitude of riders. Yeah. I think this suits more people than just getting something that has lost torque. This will come out the gate well. It is a perfectly good bike that you can go and race on now. You could tailor it for somebody who wanted a little bit more yeah. rev. You could tailor it for a little bit more bottom end. But as a balanced bike, I'm quite happy with this. You've got just about a 10% gain there then, don't you? About 3% horsepower or three horsepower gain. What would that cost someone if they came to you and they, they bought the new bike and they wanted these gains? What would that cost them? So if you turned up on a nice Tuesday morning and dropped the bike off me, you'd take it away in the evening with a bill of around £1,200. That would include the stripping and rebuilding. It's a little bit daunting for people maybe because if you take off the, to get this cylinder off, there's a few plug connectors, there's a couple of extra screws, but the reality is to change a piston on this bike isn't really much more than the job to do it on a normal carbureted bike. So I wouldn't be, you know, from a private individual's point of view, it's not a great stress. To be honest, it really is very, very straightforward. And I would say that anybody who's used changing a piston at home with this fuel injected bike, you're going to do it in your garage just the same with no yeah. big stress. They're not going to be yeah. porting it. Yeah. So they're not going to be setting it up and porting it, but certainly just to change a piston and so forth. There's nothing scary about it. Okay, so we're looking about £1,200 there for a 10% gain on the dyno. So now we're going to head to the track and see what those gains actually mean in the real world on track. So uh, we're going to meet up with Matt, we're going to take his bike back to him and see how it goes on track. 
So there we go guys, if you own one of these new fuel injector two strokes I hope you found this video useful. And if you want to see the track test and comparison between the standard and modified version of this 125 be sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that episode coming soon. As always though guys, my name is Max, this is 999 Laser and until next time I'll see you at the track.